if for the Panthers, has been traded from Carolina to San Francisco, going to join the 49ers. And it's just a great running back for an offense because of what he adds as a receiver. This is someone that can play in the slot. You think Debo Samuel's a versatile player? Debo is receiver part running back. Christian McCaffrey is running back part receiver. And the San Francisco offense is also such a great offense for a running back to thrive in as well. We've seen pretty much anybody just come in and be extremely productive. Elijah Mitchell last year, Jeff Wilson Jr. this year, and now with Christian McCaffrey as he learns the playbook, becomes more involved in the offense. It should be really, really exciting for the 49ers. Do I think it moves the needle a ton for them? No, probably not a ton, but he's still a great addition to their offense. He's definitely a big upgrade, and I think we're still going to see this 49ers team compete for a big, big spot in the NFC. I'm not sure that they're a Super Bowl team, but I'm also not sure that they're not. Let's go ahead and talk about the roster, and we'll break it down a little bit. So we'll talk about the team, and when healthy, it's a different looking squad because it's not going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. It's going to be Trey Lance, and I think that Trey Lance has been very unfortunate with his progression. I think he would have ended up being a very good quarterback even this year. I don't know that he would have been, you know, top 10 or 15 yet, but I think, you know, moving in that direction at least. And I think for a young quarterback to just have a season ending injury and kind of have to restart that cycle again, it's extremely unfair to Trey Lance. And there's a contingent, I think it's really just a vocal minority that think Jimmy Garoppolo is the reason that the Niners are good or have been good, it's ridiculous to say, oh, uh, you know, he just wins. Jimmy, no disrespect, but the next thing out of my mouth is going to be disrespectful, so it is what it is. He just isn't good. He makes dumb decisions. He doesn't do anything particularly special. He doesn't move the needle for you in a positive way, whereas Trey Lance at least gives you something. He might still make the same dumb decisions because he's a young quarterback, uh, I, I do think he sees the field really well, though, but he offers you big-time upside with athletic ability and arm talent. He's got a really, really good arm, and he's able to make throws, and especially throw with anticipation as well, especially for a young quarterback, is pretty remarkable. I think Trey Lance is really going to be an awesome player in the league, but for some reason, people think, and I know it's not everybody, but people think, oh, Jimmy's just a proven winner. Being on a good team and winning does not mean you are the reason for that winning. Jimmy Garoppolo has had nothing to do with the success of the teams he's been on. I'm, I, I, it's just how I feel. You can disagree if you choose to. I know people are going to. Uh, but this is a really, really good team when everybody's healthy. Trent Williams has had some injuries. I know Elijah Mitchell injured. Trey Lance injured. They've just been very unlucky. Injuries are a part of the league. They happen. They're a part of every sport. Uh, always devastating to see a player go down for a long period of time. Every team deals with it, but I feel like the 49ers have been particularly unlucky. You know, losing your starting quarterback, which is what I'm going to call Trey Lance because he was, losing your starting left tackle. I know George Kittle has dealt with some injuries. It's just a tough, tough position. Defensively, when healthy, they're very, very good. Javon Kinlaw, another injury guy. Nick Bosa, we know, has kind of been in and out. Uh, it's just, it's a little bit tough for a team that has, you know, real aspirations to potentially play in the Super Bowl. They have got a, they've got a great team. Dude, let's talk quickly about Talanoa Hufunga. This guy has been incredible. And when I watched him at USC, I'll, I'll level with you. I wasn't entirely impressed. I thought he was probably just going to end up being an NFL special teamer. No, he has been remarkable for the 49ers. Everything where he excelled at USC, which is really, you know, run defense, awareness, if you want to, if you want to say that, instinctiveness, that's been on full display. But also his ability and feel for coverage as well has been surprisingly good. And he's been a great find for the 49ers. He seems like he's going to be a really good starting safety of the future. I think I'm going to move Jimmy Ward over to free safety. So George Odom isn't starting. That's a pretty obvious call here in Madden. When healthy, this linebacker core is really good. I like Dre Greenlaw. I still think that Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the NFL, or at least off-ball linebacker. Aziz Alshire is pretty good. And then we all know Nick Bosa, great pass rusher. Charles Amenahu should be rated higher, in my opinion. Hook him horns. Maurice Hurst is a good rotational player. Eric Armstead doesn't offer you a ton of pass rush. 
but is a really great overall player. And then Kinlaw is supposed to give you the pass rush, still developing as a player. Jason Verrett, when healthy, has always been good. This is just a really, really good team. Debo is a monster. But uh, I guess, yeah, the focus of this video is Christian McCaffrey. I haven't really talked about him a ton. I'm really interested to see how when fully involved with the Niners, you know, a few weeks down the line, when he's really integrated into the playbook, I wonder what Kyle Shanahan's going to do. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw certain packages with Christian McCaffrey in the slot and Debo Samuel in the backfield and really just potentially creating a lot of problems for a defense. And I think it can be argued... This is going to seem like a hot take, but if you watch Christian McCaffrey, you're, you're going to know that it's not really a hot take. I wonder, on certain routes, certainly, not every route, but I think there are certainly some plays and some routes where Christian McCaffrey would be more effective as a receiver than Debo Samuel. So I know that's going to seem like a hot take. Debo is a great player, but you know I think they both could pair really, really nicely in a, in the correct formation package and, and play type rpo could be really fun with the both of them have debo on a little slant christian mccaffrey potentially taking a handoff and they both are so electric after the catch slash getting the ball i don't know a lot of offensive potential gotta improve the interior of this offensive line mike mcglinchy even feels a little high at an 80 overall i feel like his play hasn't been up to that level Trent Williams is great, but Aaron Banks, Spencer Burford is young, I guess, and he played t left tackle, right, at uh, at UTSA? I thought so. I guess he's moved inside to guard. But anyway, it's, it's a really good team, and we have Super Bowl aspirations. So I guess Jimmy Garoppolo will stay the starter this year because Trey Lance is injured in real life, and we'll just take it from the top next year. So I guess we'll go ahead and simulate at least the midseason. This is not a realistic rebuild. We're just going to go in, see what happens, and no realistic draft class. We're going to use just the default. Once I do a realistic draft or realistic rebuild with a realistic draft class, it usually comes later in the year. We'll have a little bit of a different you know, feel for things, and, and we'll see what happens. But right now, I think this is the way to do it. We'll load in the auto-generated draft class and really get into things. Four and three at the midseason mark. Part of the reason I'm kind of delaying the realistic rebuilds as well is I usually jump in to whatever week that it is. And of course, another issue of Madden 23, infinite number of glitches and bugs and oversights at this point. They don't let you jump in past week one. And they have in every other Madden uh, in the past five years, I would guess, had jump in at week three, jump in at week four, week 11, week 15. Conference Championship Week, and it's been stuck at Week 1 the entire season. Nobody seems to care. I care. I know a lot of you watching probably care as well. Some of you, you know, have never used that feature. I've had so many people ask, how do you do that? What are, what are you doing? Um, but, yeah, it was a pretty useful feature for, for video production, as Gerard Knight has to be the pick, if I can manage to get up to number one. What is this freak player? Power rusher with A finesse moves? Are you joking? A to C block shed, A to C power moves, A to C tackle. Great to elite acceleration, agility, change of direction. Good to great for speed and strength. A awareness, A play rec. I may have found my first generational defensive tackle. And I think what might end up happening is if he is indeed generational, we might revisit this like I did with Reggie Knight in the, um, I drafted a generational receiver and played out his career following the career of a generational receiver. I think Gerard Knight might be generational. I have not seen a defensive tackle at the top of the board that looks as good as he does. Really excited to see what his attributes end up looking like. Maybe I'm jumping the gun a bit, certainly possible, but I am really excited. Players ready Let's negotiate. Who do we have here? So Jimmy Ward, Jason Verrett, Mike McGlinchey. Okay, some impactful ones for sure. Emmanuel Mosley, Jimmy G. <laughs> we could trade J uh, Jimmy Garoppolo right now. That wouldn't be the worst idea. And since this isn't, you know, a realistic rebuild, I certainly could do that. But he could get traded in real life anyway. Oh, but th the problem is in real life, Trey Lance is injured. So I feel a little bit weird about it. But I guess this really isn't about that. I don't know. I think I'm just going to hold off. I, I could get some decent value back, probably, but I'm going to avoid that. Jimmy Ward, still good, but is 31, star dev. 
I'd like to get him back on a two-year deal, ideally. He's got big-time interest in coming back, so that's nice. So if I give him a little bit more money, I think he's going to be down. Boom. Jimmy Ward back. Says that's exactly the offer he wanted. Don't really believe you. Jason Verrett, a one-year deal makes more sense. We're already running a little bit thin in terms of cap room. But bringing back some of these players is going to be really important. Mike McGlinchey, as you can see, remaining cap already down to less than $12 million, And it's going to go down even further after we sign Mike McGlinchey back. But in Madden, he's a great player to bring back. 27 years old. Star development, 80 overall. A four-year contract where he can just be our left tackle or our right tackle for the future, I think, makes sense. He's good enough. And then we kind of get into a weird spot with some of these other players. Aziz Alshire, I'm not sure it's quite good enough. Maurice Hurst doesn't want to come back. Charles Amenahu, uh, Jeff Wilson Jr., I don't know, man. I just don't think that a lot of these players are worth bringing back because I know in Madden, they're just not going to play a big impact. Robbie Gold's 39 years old. We could probably just draft a kicker if we want to go in that direction. So really the only one I would consider strongly is Emmanuel Mosley. Uh, but I think I'd probably prefer to trade him right now. So because Maurice Hurst is not coming back and Emmanuel Mosley likely not coming back as well, and they both don't start, I think instead of trading Jimmy Garoppolo, what I'll do is trade those two players, try to get some draft capital, which would let me trade up all the way to number one, which I'd likely have to if I want to get that unbelievable looking defensive tackle. I would need I would need a lot to get a first round pick. Also, Charvarius Ward is an 85 overall. Wow, that feels like a high overall. I didn't notice that. How did I not notice? Does he just have normal dev still? I guess he does. But I'm fine with sticking with uh, Ambry Thomas and Diamador Lenore. Dude, I wanted to hold off. I promise you I did. But you know what? This isn't the realistic rebuild. I'm trading Jimmy Garoppolo to the Texans. He's a born winner. All he does is win. And for, he's like DJ Khaled. Or Khaled. I don't care. I don't care what his name is. But Maurice Hurst and Jimmy G are headed to the Texans for a first round pick. I didn't really want to trade Jimmy, but this seemed to be the only way that it was going to happen. And Trey Lance is our quarterback now, which I wanted him to be. I just felt weird that he was injured. Uh, but I'm just going back on my word. Did I give my word on it? I kind of said I didn't want to, or I wasn't going to. I don't know. I guess I can't be trusted. Okay, Emmanuel Mosley, Samson Ebicam, who we're not going to bring back either. That frees up a ton of cap space, by the way. And a fourth round pick gets me a second from the Vikings. They upgrade their secondary and also defensive line in a way. Charles Amena, who's going to start. We're still competing. I don't think those trades have really put us out of contention in any way. We're four and three. I honestly think those did more to make us better than make us worse. Because we got a younger quarterback who can develop more than Jimmy Garoppolo in there immediately, despite being a little bit worse right now. Jordan Willis and Charles Amena, who can play a little bit more. Man, Jordan Willis has some big eyes. He really, I guess he doesn't have a face scan in the game. Uh, he really looks like that weird bug looking person from Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, it's definitely mean. I know I'm the last person that should be talking about anybody's appearance, but man, it feels fitting. It's not even, I don't even know that it's just like the, the eyes themselves, but the irises. What is this? That's not what I meant to click on. All right. <laughs> um, it's, they're just so, I don't know. They're so, they fill up the entire space. It feels like, I don't know. Let me know what you think. It's not very football related. Anyway, he's going to play now. Traverius Ward not face scanned in the game either. He's got the Tyrone Wilbur uh, look from Detroit Lions franchise. Same player model there. Also, I didn't talk about Drake Jackson. Real power play with the uh, the skull cap, the beanie on there in his, uh, in his picture there. But I think that's from the combine. I want to say that's his combine picture and they've, Photoshop the jersey on. I think that happens pretty regularly, but I, I think that's what's going on there. But Drake Jackson could end up being really good. He was kind of in a weird spot with USC. I remember watching him his sophomore year, and he was a completely different player compared to what he was in his junior year. I think he was at 250 and then bulked up to 270, but lost his explosiveness. 
It was a uh, no. He no. He was two seventy, and then I think he bulked down to two fifty, or not bulk, but reverse bulked, lost weight, shed weight to two fifty, but lost his play strength. I kind of forget the order of which things happen. You'll have to forgive me, but um, he's someone that has a ton of potential. Really, really good athlete. Maybe we'll get him playing now. Also, I could definitely see Eric Armstead being traded at some point in this franchise. I don't know about real life, probably not, but in this franchise, I could see that happening. Aziz Shire, I'd like to bring back, but for a very low amount of money. And it just seems to be a little bit too much. I, I don't really want to give him five mil. I don't. What is he really going to get up to? 78 overall? We just need to be able to do better than that. 12 and 5. We don't win the division, though. The Cardinals also went 12 and 5. We will check out the stats and awards. Seems like we're a little bit more productive with Trey Lance as our starting quarterback. And he played really well. 2,200 yards, 17 touchdowns to only three interceptions in the half of the season that he played. Really, really good numbers overall. His accuracy continues to improve. Athletically, probably not going to change too much over the course of this thing. Brock Purdy in there as well. Christian McCaffrey was excellent. You can see what a full season of him in this 49ers offense may look like. 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns. Um, his attributes are in a pretty good spot. His change of direction up to 97. But yeah, five and a half yards per carry is obviously unbelievable. Debo Samuel was very, very good overall, as was George Kittle. Not a ton of production for my receivers. Ray Ray McLeod probably was in the slot. Got a lot of targets, a lot of touches, but nearly identical numbers to Brandon Ayuk. Tells me we probably need a better third receiver in the offense. Ayuk played a lot more downs than Ray Ray McLeod, though, but just nearly equal production. And then defensively, Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, neck and neck in tackles. Tackles for loss, very similar. Half a sack for both. 23 tackles for loss for Eric Armstead. Seven and a half sacks. Great year. Nick Bosa, 14 and a half sacks. 22 for loss. Great year. I mean, what else can you say about it? 20 tackles for loss for Javon Kinlaw. 10 for Drake Jackson. Uh, and Drake Jackson, unfortunately, did not record a sack. We really didn't have a ton of sacks overall. I mean, such a low amount for our entire team. But seven interceptions for Charvarius Ward. I would expect that that was really close to leading the league. Very interesting. These are uh, unusual numbers from what I'm used to seeing uh, in franchise for sure. But he was really the only one with ball production. The next highest interception total was two, which is not unbelievably low, but it certainly is not very high. And we'll see if we can beat the Packers in the wild card. Got to face Aaron Rodgers. We will see what we can do. And we do win. 42 to 30. I also did see a last hurrah moment as I simulated. So I wouldn't be shocked if Trent Williams was going to hang it up after this season, which would put us in a bit of a tough spot because I don't really want to have to go out and draft a left tackle that high in the draft. I think it's going to be very expensive to go out and sign a left tackle. Although... If Trent Williams does retire, we would free up a ton of money. Lose to the Cowboys in the divisional. So that will send us to a fairly early offseason based on expectations. I think we could have made the conference championship. But not a bad year one. Cowboys end up losing the Super Bowl by one point to the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen, MVP. Zach Taylor, Coach of the Year. Jonathan Taylor, Offensive Player of the Year. Miles Garrett, Defensive Player of the Year. And Brees Hall and Derek Stingley were your rookies of the year. Matt Milano won Super Bowl MVP with the Bills. Probably had an interception in that game. Maybe back for a touchdown. You never know. 2022 retirements. I think we're going to see Trent Williams in here. I would not be shocked. And he does retire. Robbie Gold as well, so we don't have to pay him. But yeah, losing Trent Williams is a massive loss. Cannot be overstated. Pete Carroll and Rodney Hudson out of the NFC West at least. So... Maybe makes that a little bit easier for us. Aziz Shire got star dev. I'm admittedly a little bit more interested in him now. A lot of these other players, obviously not. 57 million in available cap room. Aziz Shire, I think... He, he definitely wants to be here. I would prefer a two-year deal. No, it really isn't too bad. We'll offer that. 
and Aziz Al Shire returns. It's not a position that I'm going to completely shy away from upgrading, but at the same time, I don't think it's such a desperate position of need. And we might end up transitioning to a 3-4. I mean, there's definitely potential for that if we go out and draft this defensive tackle. We would have maybe the defensive tackle we draft playing at the nose, and then Eric Armstead at defensive end, Javon Kinlaw at defensive end. That could happen. Nick Bosa obviously would be a rush outside linebacker. So, I mean, Drake Jackson could definitely play that role. I don't know. It really depends what we find here in free agency as well. And the rest of the draft, obviously haven't reviewed the draft class a ton up to this point. Hoping to see star dev for Charvarius Ward though. Corner also could be a need. He's got to get star dev. Thank you. That's, he should have been a pro bowler too, probably, right? NFL Interceptions Leader NDB of the Year. I'd hope he gets at least star dev after that. And it will upgrade slot for him. He moves up to an 86 overall, plus two with morale. Man coverage by two is not a bad upgrade to get. Do want his own coverage to join him in the 90s, though. Yeah, man. How do I not take Gerard Knight? We have him at 100% now. A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. Only C block shed. He's only 289 pounds. Not a great fit for playing over the nose. He, he looks really good. I mean, look at how many A's there are. The only downside is C block shedding. But, I mean, how do I not go up and make a move in the draft to get a player like that? Also, this receiver, Tracy Gore, looks really good. 6'5", 227, A catching traffic, B catching, deep route running, and release. He has solid, pretty much everything in there, and elite strength. I put a short route running as well to go with a spec catch, catching traffic as well. This would be another awesome player to add to my offense. The thing is, how do we trade up for all of those players? It's going to be really difficult. It'd be one thing if the Niners had a first round pick of their own. They don't. The only first round pick we have was one that I had to trade for from the Texans. This tackle, Paul St. Louis, also looks pretty good. I don't know. We're in a... We're in a tough spot. This seems to be a really, really good draft class. But as you guys know, it's not going to be possible to get all of them. It's not. But this is an unrealistic rebuild. So maybe I'm going to go crazy and make something happen. Just because it's it's so fun to draft those types of players. Odell's here would be a great addition to our offense, clearly. But then I probably couldn't draft that receiver. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to anyway. It wouldn't be a bad idea to go after Odell. The top tackle is Jawan James. It's not great. Odell has such big interest in this team. I, I mean, you know there's no way I can give him a you know, long-term contract. There's no way I can give him four years. I'd give him one year. Give him one year, see if he wants to do that. But that's pretty much the most that I can commit to. Jimmy Garoppolo has made it into free agency. The Texans didn't want him. Deshaun Elliott's here. Not really interested. Although, hook him. Love Deshaun Elliott. He was awesome at Texas. Really one of my favorite Texas players uh, of the past decade. No question. Deion Jones is here. Would be an upgrade over Aziz Alshire for now. Probably not going to do that. I'd love to get a nose tackle. Give me a little bit more positional flexibility. DJ Hill, maybe? Giants legend? Ever ever heard me say that phrase before? Yeah, I know. A bit of a stretch on legend. Uh, I, I'd offer him a contract. Eh, not thrilled about it. Nobody's offering him. It's not a big deal. We might be better off just saving money, to be honest. Maybe Ethan Pochich for a year or two. Yeah, that's a pretty reasonable contract. Two years. Maybe steal him away from my favorite team, the Giants who are 6-1 and one in real life. What a start to the season for the Giants. I thought they'd win six games, and they did. But it's also going into week eight. Bizarre. One of the craziest things I've ever seen. But it's amazing what good coaching can do. Wink Martindale, uh, Wink Martindale for the time being, has been a godsend on defense. He's been fantastic. And then Brian Dayball just has that it factor. I mean... It's so tough, you would think it's not sustainable, but the Giants have just been able to make plays when you gotta have it, they get it. And I don't know, I don't know what else you can say about that. Uh, Odell goes to the Commanders, 
We did not sign anybody. BJ Hill's still out here. Who, who else did I go after? Was it just Odell and BJ Hill? Who also didn't sign. What are you going to do? Can't win them all. Or any of them, actually. Is that the, is that the expression? Can't win any of them? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just save money for now. Oh, Ethan Pochich was the other one that's right. Yeah, we'll just save money. Nah, I gotta get an upgrade on the interior offensive line. Whatever. There's nobody here, so forget about it. I mean, I might give Javon Kinlaw a long-term contract, but I'm not gonna pay him over 10 mil per year with the or for one year with the fifth-year option. It's just not gonna happen. So I usually decline these now. Same thing with Brandon Ayuk. So we'll just extend them if we want to keep them around. Maybe we'll do one and not the other. But fifth-year options, I just don't think so. It makes sense when it's going to be a really valuable position for an already good player. So maybe you would do it to keep your costs down for another year on quarterback or maybe corner, edge rusher especially. But for a defensive tackle who's not already that good and for a receiver, probably not. I want Gerard Knight. I want this receiver. I'm going to I'm going to see what Tracy Gore ranks in the class. If he's top 5, it's going to be tough for me to not want to draft him. Anton Blades, pretty sick name. DeMarcus Edwards, maybe not a bad slot receiver. A catch in traffic and catching. Yeah, F for release and deep route running is going to be bad too. Don't care. That's not what his game is. He's a slot receiver. Maybe not the best fit for this team cuz Debo eventually will be my slot receiver probably, but Worth taking a longer look at, no question. NFL draft time. Hopefully I don't get reset. We do have a top 10 pick. We're at number eight because of the Texans. Okay, that actually gives me the flexibility to potentially move up to number one. And I, I have to do it. I'm trading up to one. Tracy Gore is a round one talent, so not anywhere near generational. Just very good, I'm sure. And then Paul St. Louis, has C run block up to 90%, but we don't really know much more beyond that. Where was the other? It was, a, it was a slot receiver. We'll have a better idea about what he is. 90%. Yeah, F release, F deep route running. Don't particularly care. Not the best athlete. Maybe has that it factor. Uh, probably not. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Vikings have the number one overall pick. I got to make a move up for it. I just have to. We do have the first pick in the second round as well. That's from the Vikings. Okay, so how do we want to do this? I think it's got to be number eight. And I'd love to just trade a second round pick. Christian McCaffrey obviously going nowhere. Eric Armstead. I'd love to trade Eric Armstead, I think. He's 29. He's just too old for Madden. Those guys do not develop. Is there any way I can trade Eric Armstead? And like my top pick of the second round? That way we can upgrade at receiver? No, they can't afford it. They can't afford it. It's got to be a pick. Okay. We'll worry about that later. Number one, or number eight, our first round pick, and a second. Please accept this. Okay, that's going to be accepted. Would they do that in real life? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. It costs so much to move up to number one. They do move down to number eight, but we're trading up for a defensive tackle, so a little bit unusual. Usually you see teams pay a ton because they're going after a quarterback, which we are not, of course, even though there maybe is a good one or two. I'm going to take a chance at this defensive tackle. Gerard Knight, Michigan State, a finesse moves, a power moves, great athlete. Maybe even an understatement saying he's a great athlete. He's got, Look at all the A's. You ever seen so many A's? Blockshed and Pursuit are the only non-A's. We're drafting them. It's glitching. Oh, my God. I... I am sick of this game. I'm just going to have to start doing these offline until this is fixed. This is ridiculous. But I actually made a mistake. Uh, it gave me the option it, like, to start the draft again. So it was like we never even started in the first place. What I should have done was gone in, saved the draft class to my team. Since I didn't make any moves in free agency... I should have saved the draft class and um, just brought it into an offline season. Should have done that. Wouldn't have been hard to recreate all the moves I made because I didn't really make that many. Hopefully it doesn't screw up, but 
Knowing Madden, 23, yeah, it probably is going to. We're going to take Gerard Knight here, hopefully. And we do. Hidden Dev, 90 strength, 77 speed, 79 agility, 87 acceleration. I think he's going to be a beast. Is he generational? I don't know. That's tough to say, of course. But he looks pretty good. So now the problem becomes outside of just the glitches it's an entirely different set of problems to potentially deal with the the thing becomes do we end up trying to trade up 20 spots for the receiver if he's available at 10 i'm going to consider it at least not going to trade up into the top 10 maybe it is still available do we move up to 11 for a third receiver it's a lot but he does look very very good really well balanced Good athlete. I mean, solid speed, I feel like, is discredited. He ran in the low four fours. And it's also, it looks really, really good. What do we do about a player like this? Where's deep route running? I don't see it. Am I blind? Where's deep route running? It's a B. I actually, I want to find it. Oh, it's, it's second level all the way on the left. Okay. It looks really, really good. I don't really know how a player like that is going to be bad. Maybe he is. I, I guess certainly an option, right? Paul St. Louis is also someone I would consider, and it's going to be really tough to get both. If he lasts until the second round, that's great. We just... Not improving left tackle is going to be a problem. But do I get Tracy Gore? I just think Tracy Gore is probably better than most other receivers that we'd find. What can I do to get this pick? It's going to be tough. I mean, would the Giants want Eric Armstead? I think it's unlikely. Quarterback, right guard, left guard, middle linebacker, tight end. They have the number 11 overall pick. What I can really offer is a first round next year. I can offer a third round this year. And I can offer a third round next year as well. And it doesn't really get me that close. They have a ton of cap room. I'm going to dangle Eric Armstead in front of them. See if they bite. He's just 29 with a huge cap hit. Still not enough. They just don't really have a big time interest in him. And I don't want to trade that second round pick. Because I'm being a little bit more crazy than I usually am in these but uh, it's gonna have to be if i uh i don't know man this is really tough this is a tough call do i want the receiver or do i want to move up again for a tackle i know i have number 33 overall we'll see if the giants take him. they don't they go with a corner do the raiders take him? i'll roll the dice they still don't take him. Okay, I mean, he's available at 13. Let me see if the Ravens want to make a deal. They need a defensive tackle. They might be a lot more interested in Eric Armstead. They can afford him. He's actually an upgrade in terms of age and overall for them. So they're not really interested in just Eric Armstead at all. It's not like DeForest Buckner to the Colts for a first round pick. What about a third? They have less interest? No, okay. I thought it was yellow for some reason. Um, it's going to be really tough to trade Eric Armstead, it appears. doesn't really feel like anybody wants him. He's like that who want me meme, and like it's 100% no on the Instagram story. I don't... I don't think there's a way I can move up much more than this. Oh, he's still available. He's still available at 14. Dude, ugh. Okay, we're going to be able to make this happen with the Patriots. I still want to hold on to number 33. I'm kind of going a little bit crazy in this. Because I'm going to give away a bunch of current and future picks to try and uh, get the players that I think are really going to help us now. It's probably going to have to be a future third. But I'm probably going to end up trading that as well. We're going to have no picks this year or next year. Is, is what's likely. <laughs> Eric Armstead, who I know is going to be unpopular that I've moved him. Another guy that's dealt with injuries. First round pick next year, which I hope is really, really low. A third round pick next year. 
for number 14. I'm taking the receiver. He looks really good. He's not a top five talent in the draft. I know that. I don't care. Looks really good. Maybe this is just a stacked draft class. I can't ignore a player with this talent. It's really, really difficult to do that. 6'5", 230 nearly, with just a great set of skills. So much A going on as well. Short route running, spectacular catch. Catch in traffic, great after the catch too. A break tackle, A carrying, B juke move. Also, B deep route running, B run block, B release, B stiff arm, B ball carry, uh, ball carry vision. So like Tracy Gore does everything well, and we don't have a big receiver on the team already. Like Jawan Jennings, I, do, I think we just let him walk. So 90 acceleration, 90 speed, 90 uh, jumping, 91 change of direction. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get kicked. I'm gonna have to redo everything. It's it's over. Oh, and the Giants is back to. Uh, Pick 20 as well in Giants franchise. So that's another problem I have to deal with. I'm just so sick of this, dude. This one, though, has me where I'm supposed to be. But I might 2013 Vikings this. Oh, man. You know what? I just forgot. The Giants also have traded up more recently for three first round picks. Do you remember? There are some good ones. Daniel Jones. Dexter Lawrence and DeAndre Baker. What a class. Paul St. Louis looks good though. How long is he going to stay on the board? I don't know. I don't know. I might try and make a move up now, but this will likely be my final trade because I just won't have any draft capital. But I think these moves all make our team better. And I have to try and do that. Number 33, I saved for a reason. Number 91 to move up to 20. Really, that's not accepted. They're not moving down that much. Less than 15 spots picking up a third round pick. That's more of a Madden trade than a real life trade probably. This should be accepted though. Adding in a second round pick next year. It's a lot of value. We don't have top picks next year. But I'm banking on this being a better draft class. And I believe that it is. So these are the moves that I'm making. We'll deal with the consequences, and hopefully they're good ones. Consequences, of course, has a negative connotation a lot of the time, but doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means a result of something, if I'm not mistaken. But Paul St. Louis, Hall of Fame name, not the strongest guy. 83 strength, 70 speed. I thought change of direction was good. It's only a 59. I thought he had a good grade in that. 59 feels low. Yes, he is a tackle. I don't know. Uh, seems to be a decent pick. Hidden Dev. And uh, we'll see if we can get through the rest of this draft here. Already struggling a bit at the top to get through it. I can't believe Giants franchise. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. All right, round five. If we can find any value down the board, I mean, a pass coverage linebacker with a zone coverage feels pretty good in terms of value. Don't know that we're going to go in that direction, but at the same time, just at a quick glance, I don't really see anything more promising. So I think... I think we will. Kai Pettis doesn't look bad either. Not really a great athlete. I think we're going to take the linebacker. Gary Allen, are you a good athlete? Eh, he's fine. All right, we'll take him. Hidden Dev, 80 speed, 89 acceleration. All right, probably let the CPU handle the rest just to make sure this draft gets done. Let's see how we did. Draft recap. Hopefully we got some really talented players. I think I did find a generational player. So if this ends up being its own video, if this franchise file doesn't corrupt, this is the highest overall defensive tackle I've seen in the game, let alone drafted this year. 83 overall power rusher, 80 run stopper, 78 speed rusher. I would bet he has superstar X factor. I would bet this is a generational player. 88 power moves coming out of the draft. 92 tackle. So if you don't know what generational is, I feel like a lot of people, 93 hit power. Dude, what is this freak player? A lot of people don't really fully understand what it means. So there are the regular players that you get through the draft. There are the high tier generators, which are the very top of the usual attributes that you can go to. There are attribute caps. So maybe the attribute cap for a really good defensive tackle might be 85 power moves. Well, generational means you can exceed where the cap previously would have been. So 88 power moves is ridiculously high. 92 tackle, though, is what stands out to me. That is an insane number. 
that is definitely boosting his overall. I would bet pretty much anything he is generational with Superstar X Factor. And if you're seeing this at the beginning or somewhere in following the career of a generational defensive tackle video, you know what? It, it, I'm right. <laughs> If this is still a 49ers rebuild and you're, this never makes it to another video, I was wrong. Because Superstar Dev would still be great, but I th I think this is generational. 83 is such a high overall. T uh, Tracy Gores is 75. That's not bad. Kind of what I expected. And it definitely looks good. I mean, 6'5", 227 with 86 agility and 91 change of direction is very, very good. Very good. Route running's not bad. Morale's affecting him a little bit. But this should be a really good player. The left tackle's only a 72 overall. But that's one of those positions where the overall is lower to space it out more. When they did that big update to redo how they do positional overalls, quarterback, tackle, and middle linebacker are, I think, the big three that got affected the most. So 72 for rookie left tackle really isn't too bad. As you can see, that puts him in the top 32% of left tackles. He's the number 34 ranked left tackle already, which means just a little bit worse than all of the starting left tackles in the league. So I don't really think that's too bad for someone that's, what, 22 years old? Yeah, so it's going to seem like I'm rationalizing, but that's just how I see it. We also got a 70 overall receiver down the board in Jalen Howell from FIU. He seems like a slot type with electric speed. Not really, he's more of a deep threat. 88 change of direction, 97 speed, 94 acceleration. Kind of a fun player to add to the offense. He was the top player in the class, by the way, by a lot. 83, the next highest was a 76, which is not even amazing, especially for a running back. And then 75 down the board. Quite a few 75s and 74s. Not a great draft class, except for one in my opinion, generational player. He's insane. Ooh, who is Allen? Oh, Greg Allen had hidden dev. That's right. Gary Allen had hidden dev. I call him Greg. Greg Allen, Yankees legend. Um, I don't know where he's going to play. I think I'm just fine where I have him. If he gets in, he gets in. Do pass coverage on all Shire. So corners look pretty good. Uh, Knight, by the way, is an 85, just straight up 85 overall defensive end. I guess 88 power moves make sense. 77 speed. Yeah, he's a monster. So we could definitely just stay 4-3. I could play him at, at defensive end if I wanted to. He's an 83 overall defensive tackle. Is he just straight up an 85 overall defensive end? Or is morale factoring? I don't see the plus one on him, so I I don't know. But yeah, I mean, freak. He, he should be unreal. Super excited at a player like that, Debo in the slot. Um, we'll play Gore in after. We have Brandon Ayuk. This is a really fun team. Still have to improve the interior of our offensive line. We had three first round picks. I would hope that we got a lot better, but I feel really good about things. We'll go to the midseason mark, see how we're doing. Four and two at the midseason mark. I'm really excited. I would be absolutely floored if we don't see Superstar X Factor. I'd bet pretty much anything. And it is. So, Gerard Knight is a generational player. He's going to be maybe an 88 overall during his rookie year. He's got unstoppable force, which he is. I, this is this is one of my best draft picks ever. This guy is a monster. Only three players ready to negotiate? What does that mean? So, there are a few in here. Um, I guess we can't negotiate with Javon Kinlaw. He doesn't really have interest in coming back. Why is that? What are your interests, Javon? Motivations, wants to play in a different uh, scheme. That's fair. But likes everything else, is the scheme just really outweighing everything else? Okay, also, it's funny to call California just a warm weather state. And I know it is, right? But there's such a large difference between Southern California and Northern California to group them into two. Kind of feels funny, especially Santa Clara. As you get up north on the bay there, it can get pretty chilly. So it's like, it's it's nitpicking. It really isn't a problem. But Los Angeles, December weather, is just month I chose. 
which you do play football in December. I don't know if you guys knew this. Into, of course, January, February, if you're lucky. But uh, high of 68 and low of 49 for LA, and that's the average high to low. For Santa Clara, where the Niners play, the average high is 59 and low is 42 in December. So I'm not I'm not disagreeing that it's a warm weather state. Just California is a big state is all I'm saying. I'm going to give Nick Bosa all of the money. I'd give him a seven year deal. Get him till he's 32. And Nick Bosa returns one of the most lucrative defensive player contracts in NFL history, surely. But I think he's going to be worth it. And then Brandon Ayuk, I'd like to bring back as well. Jason Verrett will deal with quickly. Just a one-year contract. Get him back. He's still good enough, right? We only have $16 million left, though. What is weighing down on my cap room so much? Because Ayuk's really going to bring us down. I, I want him to return, though. And he is back. So Javon Kinlaw is going to be tough. That might be a situation where we uh, franchise tag him which is going to be so expensive. We got to figure out a way to retain him. Let me check out salaries. Ah, Nick Bosa, dude. What a bad contract. <laughs> uh, where can we save money? We can't really. We really can't. We really can't. No, we're just stuck. A little bit stuck. Also, what feels dumb, there shouldn't be any associated penalty with Christian McCaffrey, right? Because the Niners traded for him, so they're not paying his bonus. Am I misunderstanding how this works? No, I'm not, because I'm looking at the dead cap. For the Niners this year, there's 690 k in dead cap if they were to get rid of him. Beyond this, there's none. Zero dead cap for 23, 24, and 25. So, he shouldn't have any penalty associated with, with getting rid of him. I'm not going to, obviously, but that's... Stupid that that's there. The game doesn't realize that the Niners traded for Christian McCaffrey, which I guess is understandable because he was just on the team when the franchise started. But uh, I didn't do that. That's just the roster. It was updated in Madden already. So they need to figure out some way to get that into the back end where if you want to get rid of your huge contract running back, you can, you can, but it doesn't exist. We snuck into the playoffs here in the wild card. At an 87 overall. Went 10-7, and seven, won the division. Check out the stats here. Baker Mayfield going off with the Panthers. We might have to change the offense. Trey Lance not turning the ball over, which is nice, but the yards and touchdowns really aren't going to be developing him too much. Whereas if he was the focal point of the offense, he would get a whole lot better. But Christian McCaffrey, I'm sure, was. 1,400 yards. I guess this is a Christian McCaffrey rebuild, so can't complain too much. 25 touchdowns crazy number don't think we've seen anything close for running back in a while in a while i mean derrick henry i feel like would be the only guy that would even come close maybe nick chubb but that's so many touchdowns i mean derrick henry led the league in touchdowns in 2019 and 2020 at 16 and 17 the league has just changed you're not going to see ladanian tomlinson sean alexander uh touchdown numbers again probably nick chubb leads the league in touchdowns this year with eight but only had eight last year so you get my point. Receiving. Nobody over 1,000 yards. Did Debo Samuel get rushing yards, by the way? 70 attempts, pretty good. But had 892 yards, 12 touchdowns. Ayuk was somewhat productive. George Kittle could have been better. What is your dev trait, Tracy Gore? Superstar. We made the right move. We made the right move going to get him, right? I mean, how do you deny it at this point? Superstar dev, pretty good. And if our left tackle is good, by the way, which I have not checked his dev trait yet, I mean, we might even be looking amazing. Paul St. Louis, he's got a superstar name. Is he a superstar? Nope, star dev. That's okay, though. They can't all be superstar or superstar X-Factor players. But he is already up to a 76. That puts him in the top 20% of left tackles as the 29th ranked. And that's only going to continue to climb. He's still 22 years old. Defensively, Fred Warner, a ton of tackles. 18 tackles for loss for rookie Gerard Knight led the team. Also, seven and a half sacks. 17 for Bosa with 15 sacks, which led the team. Kinlaw put up seven sacks. I'd like to bring him back. And then you can see some interesting interception numbers. I think I will end up changing the defensive playbook. We have some unbelievable pass rushers. They got to start playing like it. 
So maybe Buffalo playbook, definitely an option. Ed Oliver was productive. Greg Rousseau was productive. Points per game, it's always the Cowboys, right? Chiefs have kind of taken a step back. The Cowboys are just always so good. I imagine they're going to be near the top in defense as well. See points allowed. Ravens, Bills, Niners. I don't want to go Bills, though. I want I want the, uh, the quarterbacks to fear us. Interceptions. I don't know. Rams defense, probably not a bad idea either. We'd have to move to a 3-4. So Bills could make some sense. But we're going to try that maybe next year. The Panthers are going to be a tough team to beat in simulation. They're really good. We It wasn't tough. 45-13. We smacked them. Our defense was really good. Number two in the league in points per game. We were a little bit susceptible to giving up passing yards, but not so much rushing yards. I don't know that we have to change. But maybe. Maybe we could. Offense, though, needs a facelift. What about the Atlanta Falcons? Can we beat them? Surely. Surely. 28-14. Our defense is rocking. And the Niners are good. We're going to jump in here um, against the Eagles, who are also very good. I like to say the Niners because it's third person for some reason. I, I misspoke, of course. Okay, conference championship. Niners-Eagles. Battle of Terrell Owens teams. There's probably some more crossover as well. Eagles 49ers does feel like a pretty reasonable 2022 uh, conference championship matchup in the NFC. I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure, but I could easily see the Niners and the Eagles playing. Jalen Hurts has been really good this year. The Eagles obviously are not messing around. And that would be a fun game to watch. I hate the Eagles a lot, but they could definitely win that game if... The Niners make it to the conference championship. If it is Eagles Niners, I will pick the Niners. I will say 24 Eagles. Eagles 20. 24 20. <laughs> Let's see if that ends up coming true. Eagles up 7 0 early. Our defense has been so great the entire year. We need them to be better, though. Our offense really coming to play. 17 14 Niners as we are into the second half, and we're going to continue to score points. 20 to 14. Need more, though. 26-14 is putting us in a really good spot. Defense just came up clutch. But just over a minute to play. It is 26-20. The Eagles have the football. Oh, my goodness. How did this happen? That's no good. That's no good at all. Hurts going down the field. Good defense. 51 seconds, no timeouts for Philadelphia. It seems like we had a really big turnover. Let's get onto this defensive tackle, Knight. Is he, why is it only Superstar? He's an X-Factor. Why does it show only Superstar? Always something with this game. Maybe it's not activated somehow? Got five pass rush points. I don't really know how those work, but that feels like it's good. We just drilled the quarterback. Fred Warner in coverage on Goddard can't get the pass breakup. He was right there. The Eagles do need a touchdown, though. And I think we're going to be able to stop them, but you never know. Still a really tough team. It's a really tough task. But we need to get some pressure in there. And just bulldoze through this line. Come on. He's getting double teamed. It's unfair. Big hit. No fumble. Time's going to tick, though. When they go over the middle of the field, they're not doing them any favors. Get to the QB. We just drilled him. Knight. Ball. Tipped to the air and knocked incomplete. Are they going to go Hail Mary now? It looks like they are. Knight's on the ground. Ball shot to the end zone. Knock it up. It's caught. It's going to be a touchdown. Woo. All right. Dallas Goddard. Nice catch, dude. They're going to go for two. We're not out of the game yet. But man, does it look bad. Sure looks bad. It's nice defense. Terrible. I'm going to put McCaffrey on a wheel. We have nine seconds. I can afford to go down the middle. I don't even know that we're going to have time. We'll have to see what gets open here. I'm kind of looking at Kittle so I can throw outside. That's good timing. It's a nice catch. We don't get into field goal range here unless there is like an extraordinary amount of wind. Nine seconds just was really not quite enough time. I still have time out, so we can line up and see how long this is. It's a 70 yarder. We have a ton of wind. It's the wrong way. Oh, if it was the other way, I might try it. 
but obviously this is not nearly close enough. Debo's got 95 spectacular catch. It's got to be the guy we go to. I don't know. I don't even know that Trey Lance is going to be able to throw it this far. Going to the end zone. Make a play, Debo. I mean, we didn't even get a chance. <laughs> Tough way to lose. Tough way to lose, but we'll go to the next season. Next offseason. We don't have much in the way of picks or money. So, I don't... We'll see what happens, I guess. Season recap has the Ravens beating the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Lamar won MVP. And as you can see, Gerard Knight won Defensive Rookie of the Year. My face cam might be covering that, but that's pretty nice. Von Miller won Defensive Player of the Year. No surprise. George Fox, quarterback of the Falcons, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Lovey Smith, Coach of the Year. Yeah, Josh Allen, MVP, Cooper Cup, Offensive Player of the Year. I hope it frustrated you guys the way I read that. Jumping up and down in seemingly uh, no order at all. Gerard Knight does have an upgrade point. He could go up to an 89, maybe a 90 overall here in season one. He's playing up to a 93, which is insanity. I don't know why his X Factor wasn't active. Do I do Run Stopper here? I think I'm going to. So he might stay at an 89 overall. And he does, as I predicted. But that's okay. I think that makes him better. Strength and block shedding going up. Actually, he goes up to a 90. Okay. Block shedding, power moves, finesse moves looks really good. I mean, this is the definition of a generational player. I didn't know if we'd see a defensive tackle this year because I feel like I had done so many drafts and never seen one. I don't. I think I may have seen a corner, maybe a safety. I think a safety early on. But I hadn't seen a defensive tackle. I don't know that I've even seen a defensive end or an outside linebacker or a linebacker yet. But um, yeah, pretty crazy player. 83 overall uh, is nuts, as you guys know. Okay, so now we have 44 mil in cap room. So maybe was there a big penalty associated with Eric Armstead getting traded? That's possible. I want to bring Javon Kinlaw back. I'll give him a very low risk deal. I mean, this is this is not a lot of money for Javon Kinlaw if he develops the way we think he's going to. He wants to play for a new team. Uh, don't care. 21.8 million. It is what it is. We'll eat some of that. It's okay. It shouldn't take that much money to bring in a better interior offensive lineman or two. So we won't be able to draft more than one probably with our picks, but sign one, draft one, that's not a bad idea. I haven't seen the class, so I don't know if there even is a good one. Hopefully there is at center or guard. I mean, this guard looks pretty good, but i not going to be able to trade up into the top five, obviously. I need somebody good down the board. That's what I'm looking for. Not bad for potential UDFA here. I don't really know what the pass blocking is, but the fact that it's at least A to C is pretty good. I worry about the run block power and finesse, though, being low. But Dave Griggs is a UDFA. Maybe something there. Drew Knapp looks really good. A lead block, B pass, uh, pass block, A run block. Not bad. This is someone I could see being in position to get round one to two guys. So kind of at the top end of that range, but possible. Ooh, hold on. Eduardo Ramos. This is the guy. A awareness, A to C impact, B pass block, A run block. Great to elite speed. Strength is only decent to solid. Oh, this is the guy. A run block finesse too. And round three to four. Might have to move up. I don't remember exactly where we are. But that's the guy. Unless there's something down the board here at guard that has potential. I, I always worry about the ranges, but I could see Mick Burton being quite good. He doesn't even look as good as the center. But it is different, the ranges at guard uh, and center. So... Now, I think we found our guy, though, in Eduardo Ramos from West Virginia. Chuck Boston, by the way, looks good. Uh, All-time porn star name. Chuck Boston. Anytime you have, like, one syllable name, especially, like, Chuck, I feel like, and uh, then city name, <laughs> I, it feels... I mean, I guess it doesn't even have to be one syllable. Like, like Terry Seattle from Murderville. Kind of a funny show with Will Arnett. I think that's a fair review. His name Terry Seattle. Not a porn star, but name fits. I will need to bring in a kicker at some point also. So that's something to keep in mind. But the offense will change. The defense. Will the defense change? I think I'd like to try out Buffalo. That could be interesting. I mean, 
We really need to fully unleash Nick Bosa, I feel. And I think Buffalo Playbook's going to be the way to do that. Justin Jefferson's sick. Can't get him. We're not going to really be able to get anybody in here. Jalen Hurts is in free agency. Good. Don't love the interior offensive lineman available. I feel like there aren't really a ton of developable players. That can't be a word, but it feels like it could be developable. It's a little bit worthy. Wordy. Xavier Worthy, hook him horns. Did I accidentally do that? Connor Williams, hook him horns. Yeah, developable is a word, but it, you got to admit, sounds pretty bad. He would like to join this team. He played left tackle at Texas, by the way, and uh, has moved to guard, played guard with the Cowboys, and now is a center. It It's quite a transition, but he's a good athlete. I mean, he was a highly touted player at Texas. He was really good um, to my memory, but just never really found it at left tackle in the league. Sam Cosme seems like a true tackle. Another Texas guy is why I bring it up. A kicker, Tyler Bass. It's a little bit too expensive for a kicker. I don't know how impactful they are in simulation. Like, what's the difference between a top end 80 overall kicker in sim and a 75 in Jason Sanders? I really don't know. They're not too dissimilar in terms of in terms of what they're looking for from a contract, but obviously the lower overall guy uh, is just significantly cheaper. And that, that feels um, contradicted, but I mean, even though it's, it's not contradictory in my head because it's significant in terms of the position, even though it's only like a million or two. We did get Connor Williams. He's going to play guard for us because I'll probably draft that center. And then Jason Sanders, I think, will agree at some point. He's being a little bit difficult right now. You have to put him down for a nap. Herbert to the Giants, finally. Almost happened, but he went back to Oregon. Sean Gary changes NFC North teams. Jason Sanders still is not signed on. I don't think we need really any other position. There we go. So I'm comfortable just saving, saving this money and moving on. Also, I think there's a decent chance that Connor Williams has his overall go up at guard. Although Aaron Banks and Spencer Burford especially are really developing. He's still only 24. He's a 74 overall. I guess it wasn't really a huge need. So I guess for the time being, Connor Williams will stay at center and we'll see if the draft changes things, which I expect that it will. We do need depth at tight end though. I just saw Allen had star dev. I mean, it looks like it's active. I don't know why he showed up as superstar in the game. And um, as for edge rusher, that actually seems to be a bigger need for us. But I, I still like Drake Jackson. I like Talano Hufunga. Corner, kind of be a need. Ooh, Nick Carson, number one player in the draft. B block shed, power moves, A tackle, and Texas. But yeah, probably not going to go that direction. I don't think we need to use our points on the center. I think we know about him. I think he's going to be pretty good. So focus players, I don't know. Like, what player are we really going to be able to get? That's the thing. Because I got some guys on here that look really good, but we're going to have no shot to get them. Lance Hawkins could be good down the board. Carl Newman looks good down the board. You guys remember Tank Carradine? Kind of fitting with the Niners. A to C block shed, A power moves, a defensive tackle. It's an interesting player. If he had A block shed, I mean, we don't need defensive tackle, but that, that'd be a very interesting player, no question. Giants have the number one overall pick. And we don't pick until the very end of the fourth round. Yeah, I mean, we're in a tough spot. We're in a tough spot because we're just going to miss out on good players. Did I not check out Marquise Warner? No, I think I did. I did Newberry and I did Hawkins and Newman. We, we won't be able to get any of them. The one player I can really get is Eduardo Ramos. And I still think I'm going to have to move up to make it happen. We are giving the Bills some good value here. We're giving them a fourth and a fifth this year and a second next year to get their second round pick. This is just to ensure the fact that I have a chance to draft that center. I know he's around three to four guy. I don't want to risk it getting to round three, even though he'll probably be available at least midway through the uh, third round. I'd rather just give up some more value and make sure I get the player that I want. So that's the direction I've decided to take. He looks really, really good. A awareness, B pass block, A run block. 
elite speed, a lot of great things in here. Like this looks to be a steal. And we do see steel centers in the draft, I would say quite a lot, but he looks very, very good. Hidden Dev, also 86 strength for a center is pretty high for a draftable player. I will also say that. I feel like we don't really see that so often. I think that's a really, really good pick. So super excited to add him to the team. I think it's gonna be a great fit here with the Niners. And I think he's gonna start just because of that hidden dev. He also did the double flex, like he has superstar X Factor. I know it's random now and it, it changes, to, like, you know, their pose doesn't actually have anything to do with what their dev trade is. I'm gonna predict that he's a 76 overall, and that's gonna be good enough to start. It might be a little bit worse, 73, but that's gonna be good enough to start. That hidden dev makes it worth it. He has 77 run block, 86 strength and lead block, 88 impact block. So that ended up probably being an A. Run block is good. Pass block is not too bad. Playing up to a 74. I thought he was going to be at the very top end, though. I thought he was going to be a 76, which would have been a really good overall. 73 is not bad. It just isn't, like, crazy or anything. The number one overall player was an 81 overall running back. Garrison Rivers from Oklahoma. Very Oklahoma name. I'll give that to you. And he seems pretty good. I wouldn't say amazing. 94 agility is great. Change of direction and 92 is really good. 93 speed is great. Now, you know what? He's great. He's great. I just see ball carrier vision's not too high. Juke move and spin move aren't crazy. Break tackle's not crazy, but there are a lot of really crazy things about him. So, not going to downplay that. Another really good running back. This guy looks a lot better because he's a giant. Telvin Smith. Not to be confused. God forbid confused with the other Telvin Smith. You can. Google and find out what he's up to or into, and it's bad stuff. So who's the odd man out here? I think it's Aaron Banks. He's fine. I think we're going to stick with Spencer Burford, and then Connor Williams starts at left guard, and the center stays at center. I think that's the best course forward, and uh, Connor Williams should be good. I know Aaron Banks is like the actual niner. It's kind of nice to keep the core together. But he's a 79 overall at left guard, playing up to an 81, is a scheme fit. We now have agile scheme fits at left guard, center, and right guard. Kind of nice. I, we, I didn't address tight end. Kyle Juszczyk is cool, but Jalen Moore cannot be a tight end for us. Can't happen. He is a tackle. So we're going to go ahead here. Some good options per usual. Um, we'll bring in my guy, the big O, Albert Okwabenom. Former Mizzou standout. He was a beast at Mizzou too. And then I prefer somebody that can block a little bit, especially in this offense. So we'll look for run blocking. Max Williams has 75 run block. I knew he was a decent blocker, but I, I always kind of thought on that Ravens team, Nick Boyle was the guy and then Max Williams was just there. 75 run blocking is really, really high. Dude, Nick Bosa didn't have edge threat elite. He gets it now. <laughs> Feels like a no-brainer. This defensive tackle, Gerard Knight, is a freak. Only 23 years old. Would have been cooler if he was a year younger. But freak. Playing up to 98 strength. 79 block shit's still a bit low. But 92 power moves. 77 finesse moves. 77 speed. Awareness is in a good spot at 86. Play rec 84. Tackle is a 93. Acceleration is an 89. 89 for acceleration is so nuts. 93 hit power is one of the highest I've ever seen for a defensive tackle. Pursuit's really good. And let me let me really show you just how crazy that hit power is. Like, that might be one of his X-Factor abilities, or not abilities, but X-Factor um, X attributes. I want to see where 93 hit power is for defensive tackles across the NFL. Because to me... That is really, 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 really high. And it is the highest in the entire NFL. So that should show you. DeForest Buckner playing up to 91. Probably lower than that usually. What is it up to? Yeah, that's going up by three. So if you just factor in DeForest Buckner here, he has the highest hit power in the league. 91 minus three is 88. Five point difference. 
That's some pretty quick math. I hope you guys are impressed. Uh, so Vita Vea, I guess, would be next. So plus four. It's such a high number. It's why, and compared to other, you know, young defensive tackles, 65, mid to high 70s. We got one that sneaks into the 80s because of a morale boost. Mid to high 70s for all these guys. This is, it looks sorted, but it, it's just bouncing around. And then a random 93. There's an 83. Gerard Knight is just ridiculous. I really, really want to highlight that because he's one of the best players I've seen in the draft the entire year. We've seen a plenty of generational receivers. They're all great, but this is truly a unique freak that we have not seen. Right, let's try four three quarters Buffalo. I just want to see some crazy, uh, some crazy numbers. That's what I'm going to try for. And then Panthers is always really, really good. And okay, so I, I, I don't know what the Panthers usually run. Matt Rule fired. Uh, I want the Panthers playbooks though, and I want their offensive scheme. I don't remember what it is. So that's a little bit frustrating because that is the exact one that I want. Multiple zone run and then Carolina. Multiple zone run. I wonder if they've changed it though because he got fired. And yes, I checked it back in Giants franchise because we're not too far into this one. And uh, yep, still at pick 20 in the draft. I don't know what's going to happen with Giants franchise. I really, really want to play it. I'm, ha I'm having fun with the series. Had a really fun draft pick. And, uh, yeah. Ooh, he's still in the game. That's nice. Okay, so, with that set, Buffalo defense, Carolina offense. We got some tight ends in there as well. Uh, this offense should be transformed. Christian McCaffrey should still be incredibly productive. And the defense, I hope, will be really productive as well. I don't know that we're going to be as good. I hope we are. But we should be incredibly productive. Six and one. Things are working out. We have the number two. Nope, that's not us. All right. Well, we have the number two defense in points per game again, now in Buffalo. Number 11 in offensive points per game, but 30 points per game is pretty good. So not too mad about that. Top five in rushing yards per game. So we're still obviously performing quite well. We got a quarterback named Howie. He's not wearing number 22, is he? That's all right. Great offers for Elijah Mitchell. Nah. Traverius Ward. Does not want to come back. Why? So he wants to be close to home in Mississippi. Limiting his options of what team he could play for, really. You got, like, the Saints in the South. Texans. Uh, Cowboys to the West. Um, you have the Falcons to the East. You have the Titans to the North. East. Other than that, Bears, if you want to go super North. No, there are not a ton of options. Just stay in California, dude. I'll give you more money. Just hang around. I need a corner. All right, he's back. Dre Greenlaw wants kind of a lot of money. I'll give it to him. Dre Greenlaw's back. Jimmy Ward, maybe for a year or two. Yeah, that's fine. He wants to come back. I want to have him back, so makes sense. Elijah Mitchell. Oh, maybe we should trade him. Talano Hufunga will be back. No surprise there. Again, a lot of mutual interest. Jason Verrett continues to get worse. Ambry Thomas will take his place. Is there the same overall, same dev trait? One is 24, one's 33. So I'll probably pass. Trey Lance does not want to come back. What does Trey Lance want? He wants a different offensive fit. He's also really cheap because he's a low overall. I think the game's valuing him as a backup quarterback. So this is a steal. And Trey Lance is back. We'll also extend Javon Kinlaw really, really cheap. Eight million at the most expensive. For Javon Kinlaw, it feels really good. I know he's only 77 overall. I keep expecting him to take that jump. Hopefully, this is the year where that happens. And I don't know. We'll handle the Elijah Mitchell situation when we need to. Let's go to the playoffs. Six and one start. Probably will end up being a 12 and five finish. But that's okay. That means we're guaranteed to make the playoffs. Okay, even better than 12 and five. 14 and three with a first round bye. That is what we like to see. Trey Lance. Ooh, led the league in passing touchdown with a 48, less than 10 interceptions, nearly 5,000 passing yards, still no player tags for him. He's only a 78, playing up to an 81. That is our franchise quarterback with those numbers. He might win MVP. Rushing, Rich McCaffrey was still great. 1,700 yards might be the high of the video on 333 attempts, 
14 touchdowns, averaged 100 rushing yards per game. Debo was amazing. Tracy Gore was awesome. George Kittle, highly productive. Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, also a ton of yards. This is These are amazing numbers. Exactly what I wanted the offense to look like. And then defensively, Fred Warner had 122 tackles, two for loss, four sacks, 15 tackles for loss for Bosa, 11 for Gerard Knight, 10 for Drake Jackson. And then quarterback sacks, not quite to, you know, Von Miller numbers, but 16 and a half is great in real life. 13 and a half for Gerard Knight, also really great. And then interceptions, Fred Warner had four, Jimmy Ward with three. Really awesome year for everybody. Gerard Knight's going to go up to a 94 overall, probably. He has 97 power. He is getting some boosts, by the way, but yeah, he looks nuts. He's got 94 hit power now. Uh, let's do speed rusher. Just try something else out there. Get finesse moves going on up. Plus two, also get pursuit by one. So finesse moves is now going to be into the 80s, but obviously he's getting boosts, but he's at 97 overall. This is his second year. And he's not even playing way up to a 97. He's a 94. This is ridiculous. Also, another thing I just noticed, the receiver that was generational I did my video on was Reggie Knight. Are we going to start a narrative that these guys are related? Brothers? They're both athletic freaks. Reggie Knight was what? 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. I think he was 6'5, 230, 240, something like that. I think 230. Gerard Knight, 6'4, 289. His younger but bigger brother. <laughs> this dude is nuts. Crazy, crazy player. I, I'll go on and on about it. I, I just haven't seen somebody like that. George Kittle and Tracy Gore. Tracy Gore is kind of like the uh, unsung hero of this so far. Superstar dev player would usually be a big focus. He's the third best receiver on our team. He's only 23, also in his second year, and is already into the 80s. He's a great player, but really isn't getting a ton of love because we just drafted the best defensive tackle or best defensive lineman even that I have ever seen in Madden 23. And this game had so much potential, by the way. Generational players are really such an awesome addition. Um... And it's been completely ruined and bogged down by bugs and glitches. I feel bad because the game had a lot of potential, actually. And so many people have been turned off, including myself, because it's pretty much unplayable. Also, as someone with a history of acne, they did George Kittle dirty, including that on the face scan. Dude can't even go to a video game to escape it. Brutal. Sorry, George. You look good still. And we'll play the Vikings in the divisional. That should be a win. We're an 89 overall. If we lose this game, I don't want to have to end the video, but I might. 35-3, that's what I thought. So I'm actually at the start of 2024 because I, in the playoffs, stopped to eat for a minute. Didn't think that would be a problem. Disconnected for inactivity from the league. Uh, reset me to the year one draft. I had to re-sign Connor Williams. The silver lining is I didn't really have any picks or money to sign, guys. So we really didn't have to do too much. I got a different kicker. I think I got Cairo Santos, but I, I don't remember. Uh, and I, I got Connor Williams. I recreated the center. So he just has star dev. He may have had superstar. We will literally never know because a new class came in. It wasn't the same class. It auto-generates every time. Uh, but we are 6 and one to start 2024 just as we were. So hopefully this goes the exact same. I think I'm conflicted. Should should I just get us back to the conference championship? We're eight and one. Is that cheating though? But we were we were in the conference championship. I know you're like, that's an odd time to, to start eating, but um, I was going to eat while I played trivia with some of my... Uh, my YouTube buddies, the Ortiz, Draft Neck Mark, Healy Six, and uh, Wheels, and um, didn't want to keep them waiting. So I felt like it was a perfect time. Of course, when I came back into the franchise, season one draft. How stupid is that? So I have to recreate some of these things here. But uh, we'll be back in the playoffs, I'm sure. Trey Lance is not going to have the same stat line, probably. So he won't... Ayuk wants more money. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, yeah, really, really frustrating. I was having a ton of fun with this video too. And of course, 
the typical glitches get in the way. Just trying to remember what we did here. So I, I'm just gonna have to do these offline until they get a fix in, which who knows how long that's gonna be, really. It could be two weeks from now, it could be two months, it could be Madden 24. That's the actual disgusting reality of it. Uh, and yeah, he wants more money. Okay, well, yeah, this is, it's so stupid. That's all I can say. And who knows that I'm not gonna get disconnected again at some point and then get set all the way back to the draft. All right, Trey Lance is back though. And you're like, oh man, didn't I already see that? Yep. Ayuk is back as well. We have 27 mil in cap space. We could bring back Aaron Banks, but obviously not going to do that. We're going to save the money. And Elijah Mitchell, he probably wants like 4 mil per year. A little bit less than that. You know what? All right, Elijah Mitchell, just to keep you around, we will bring you back as well. We're still going to have money. We have a good RB2 now. And uh, this might even be a better season than the actual 2024 we just played. We might win 15 games. Now, we'll probably actually finish 12 and 5 this time around, like predicted the first time. 12 and 5, a tale as old as time. I'm just going to check things really briefly. Yeah, Trey Lance's numbers are worse, of course. McCaffrey's are fairly similar. The offense changed slightly. Maybe I didn't do the correct uh, scheme. Although Nick Bosa and Gerard Knight's sack numbers went up. Gerard Knight... Such a freak. Such a freak. I'm super glad I didn't have to recreate that class. That would have been devastating. The only thing now that's super disappointing is what if it's broken to where I can't um, advance this league after backing out and I'm not able to continue his career? That would be so stupid. But I guess I can, I can wait two weeks to record, you know, a generational defensive tackle video if that's what it's going to take. Like, that's... That's kind of a no-brainer. I can just wait on that. No, it, it is multiple zone run Carolina. I feel like I had that on. We just didn't get the same results in simulation on the offense side of the ball, unfortunately. Yeah, I have multiple zone run Carolina, so it is the same. But we just didn't, unfortunately, get the same results. And that would have been a big difference for Trey Lance. Of course, as I said, I had to load in a new draft class. I didn't bother with anybody else. We have a 64 overall backup quarterback with Star Dev. I mean, I would be shocked to be at Superstar, but that won't change anything. Um, and the center, he, again, could have had Superstar, but we will never know. I mean, I can't even... I, I know you guys know how I feel, man. You guys probably feel the same way. It probably doesn't ruin this video too much, but could ruin Giants franchise. It really ruins my experience playing. And um, I guess we could, in theory, get knocked out of the playoffs here. And we do. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll go, we're going to the uh, early off season after being in the conference championship this year. Fitting. Fitting, really. But we're back to where we should be. Packers beat the Broncos in the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers wins Super Bowl MVP. Russell Wilson, NFL MVP. Nathaniel Hackett, Coach of the Year. That's big time Madden energy. Nick Chubb, Offensive Player of the Year. Miles Garrett, Defensive Player of the Year. Browns had both of them as the Broncos had both for the top two. Trend does not continue. Saints quarterback Nathan Kelly wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, and then Seahawks middle linebacker wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. But we are finally at least to where we should be overall, even if the result is unfortunately not the same, which, yeah, I, I could have done force wins, right, for sure, but it, it is what it is. We'll move on. We'll try to win the Super Bowl in uh, 2024, 2025. I think, yeah, 2024. I think we're going into the 2024 season. Could be 2025, I guess. Verrett's going to walk. Banks going to walk. George Odom, etc. cetera. D'Amador, Lenore going to walk. We'll, uh, we'll spend our money wisely in free agency. I'm looking for a corner. An edge rusher, potentially, but you guys know those do not come cheap. The offensive line, I think, is in a really good spot. Greg Rousseau is not interested, and then there's a big drop-off to the next highest-rated player. It looks like if I want a corner, it's going to be DJ Reed. So, I guess we'll do it. I don't know. I, I, what are what are 
our alternatives. I don't think we have any. JC Horn, I could just overpay and get and be happier probably. Oh, he's not expensive. I would give JC Horn this contract in a heartbeat, but he's just not all that interested in it. But that'd be a big addition. Uh, and then I said edge rusher, quitty pay, no. Don't need a defensive tackle, clearly. Or, hold on. They're not good enough, but what we could have done is sign a defensive tackle and then moved over our generational defensive tackle to defensive end, which I am somewhat interested in. I'm going to try and sign Sebastian Joseph Day. And if we can bring those guys in, all right, it might be a little bit interesting. Might seem a little bit weird, but I think that's what we're going to do. I want JC Horn more than I want Sebastian Joseph Day, but we get both of them. Unfortunately, I had to pay Sebastian Joseph Day north of $10 million per year. Uh, overall, if you factor in the bonus. So that's a little bit steep. But I think what we're going to do, at least for this year, is move Joseph Day back to defensive tackle. Of course, playing in a 3-4 listed as an end. Because um, he wasn't playing nose tackle, I guess. And we're going to move over the knight, the dark knight, to defensive end. So... Let's make that change happen. And I think that's actually going to be really, really good for simulation. Also, Sebastian Joseph Day looks ripped. That is not the typical defensive tackle build. He looked shredded for 6-4-3-10. You know who he actually looks like is a um, former Texas A&M defensive tackle, Bobby. Oh, God. I think he was drafted by the Rams. Shoot. I may be wrong about being drafted by the Rams. Bobby, what? It's crazy, because I, I did draft coverage for that year. I watched film on him, and I just can't remember his name. And that's going to bother me. Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown is the one. And I think you're, you're probably going to be able to tell instantly why I would make that comparison. Dude is not built like a traditional defensive tackle. He is ripped at 6'4", 325. Sebastian Joseph Day, as you can tell. Yeah, same type of thing going on. 6'4", 310. Yeah, Bobby Brown. I don't know why. I wanted to say Bobby Briggs, but I know that was uh, just from a recent video I did. Bobby Briggs was in it. Um, so... I knew that was fresh in my mind, despite not being the correct answer. So I should have just, I should have just known it instantly, I guess. Sometimes it's just tough to recall those things, especially at 1.30 in the morning now. Yeah, it is what it is. It took me a minute to uh, set this back up. So yeah, frustrating anyway. Uh, that's a pretty good free agency. J.C. Horn, Sebastian Joseph Day, big additions. Did I move back over uh, Knight, Gerard Knight? I did. He's a 94 overall. 92 power rusher. Give him unstoppable force. And he can't quite get to uh, edge threat elite here, but he's not far away. He's pretty close. So... It won't be long. Number 68 is a gross number, by the way. Let's change that. I normally wouldn't mess around with it because it doesn't matter. But if we're going to go ahead and get back to this later, you know, I might as well customize them a little bit. What number's fitting? 92? I like that. Hopefully 92 isn't a retired number by the 49ers. I can't imagine that it would be, but you never know. I'm not a 49ers expert. I don't even know every number retired by the New York Giants. I know a few of them, right? But it's tough to know every one of them. Yep, no numbers in the 90s retired by the 49ers, thankfully. So we kind of had our choice there. And we'll look at this class. Okay. Do I have a player I'm trading up to number one for? Kai Gaddis. B block shed, B power moves, A finesse moves at 6'6", 266. Really good athlete overall. You can see great, 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 good, good, good. And he ran really well. A awareness, A play rec. Have I found another generational player? I suppose it's possible, but what are the odds? Maybe they, they made some type of update. This safety also looks crazy. Um, 
what they may have done in the recent update is change. I don't know that they did this for a fact, by the way. I'm just speculating. They may have changed the drop rate. It looks pretty good, too, for generational players. And if they were noticing you're not getting any defensive tackles or defensive ends, maybe they changed it so that you can get them now. And also, maybe they pushed them up higher on the draft board. I'm not saying that any of those guys in there are generational, but they could be. And I want two first round picks because I want to move up to number one, I think, for that defensive end. And the safety down the board also looked really good. Jimmy Ward is aging. So it would make sense that we'd want to get younger. The Rams have the number one overall pick. Good thing this isn't a super realistic rebuild. 95% scouted. He's 21 years old. This is a freak player as well. I don't know that he's generational, but this is absolutely the best defensive end I've seen in... in uh, in Madden 23, without question. I've been a little bit disappointed. I haven't really seen that many good ones. Without question, he is the best one that I've seen. And that free safety, I also want to take a look at here in Damien Wagner from AM. Only 5'10, 200, but B hit power, B man. He's a top five true talent. C tackle, A zone coverage. Ran pretty well. Elite acceleration, great speed. Ran 4 3 6 at his pro day. A awareness, P play rec. How do I get both of those players? I know how, but I, I just got to make it happen. Who else did I look at? I scouted somebody else that I thought looked good. Randall Barrett. He has B block shed. A power moves, A tackle. Also a great athlete. He looks really good too. I think they, I think they may have tweaked something. Or I'm just getting luckier. But it doesn't make sense that I would not have seen any defensive tackles and then or defensive ends and then all of a sudden I'm seeing multiple in the same rebuild in the same like three or four year span even though one of those years kind of reset I'm going to trade the Rams for this number one overall pick I'll trade a player to get it done I don't know that I can trade Sebastian Joseph Day without killing my my cap room but I'm going to make an unrealistic trade to get into position Sebastian Joseph Day I think is a one-year deal can I give him back to the Rams who probably got rid of him? Okay, we'll take the cap penalty next year. This is going to be worth it. Um, I'd really like to hold on to my first round pick because I want to take at least, and I really do mean it, at least uh, two players here in this first round could be a third. Give me your second rounder. Oh, it's close. Okay, we can make this happen. Uh, fourth round pick might have to go up it to a third might have to go up to a second which I was going to plan on using as trade bait this actually might not go through oh it does okay cool I know it's unrealistic I just signed Sebastian Joseph Day classic sign and trade work with me here go with it uh, first round pick next year second round pick this year we're getting number one we're getting number 33. I know it's an interdivision trade. I know it's not a realistic trade. I know it. But I'm sacrificing ultimate realism for the sake of fun, and I need a little bit of fun after what I've had to deal with. Kai Gaddis looks unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he is now a member of the 49ers. Doesn't look like an athletic freak or anything. Man, that, that player model doesn't really... All right, does it, whatever. Um, 85 acceleration. I'll change it to match the uh, the picture more. Uh, 82 agility, 79 jumping, 82 speed, 84 strength. Not like especially amazing athletically, but the ability is what I'm banking on. So maybe not generational as a result, just very, very good. I'd be okay with very, very, very good. If he's in the mid to high 70s, it actually... Let me rephrase. If he's in the high 70s plus, I would be very, very happy about it. If he's in the 80s, it's obviously a home run pick. If he is um, anything less than a 75, it'll be a major disappointment. And I think the possibility exists because he is not elite athletically. I think the possibility exists. I'm not going to say for a fact, but I think more than likely we've done well. I really do. Give me... Number 13. 
What can I trade to get this? 24 and a 3. Yeah, not quite. I don't know why I think that would go through. 24 and a 3 for number 13 doesn't. What if I add a 4? Wow, still no. I'm just trading a bunch of future picks at this point. If you want realism, it's unfortunately out the window in this episode. Um, and I think it probably was as soon as it reset us to the previous two years or two years prior. You guys may have seen my videos where I reset the NFL. Well, Madden saw that and was extremely uh, impressed by it and said, you know what, we're going to do the same to everybody's franchise. This tackle I also just saw looks really good. A awareness, B pass block, B run block, elite change of direction, good strength. Daryl Overstreet going to be one of the better tackles I've seen this year probably. He looks really good. This will not stay on. Um, free safety. I'm taking him. Is he off the board? No way he went early. No. Oh, that's devastating. I traded up the 13. He went at 11 or earlier. Oh, dude, you got to be kidding me. Oh, that would have been such a fun player. Okay. Give me the Browns first rounder next year. Damn. Damn, that sucks. And then if that defensive end's available at round two, pick one, uh, I'll take him. If not, I'm okay. And I'll try to trade this pick for a one, two, so I can trade for that safety. Because I'm going to. I'm trading for the safety. Um, I see some good players, but no one that I'm particularly interested in. I wanted the free safety. I thought we moved up more than enough. I thought we moved up with room to spare. I wonder if he ended up going in the top 10. Yeah, you figure that me, he may have. Damn. That's super disappointing. However, I, again, we're being unrealistic now. I'm, I'm done rationalizing it. This should be able to uh, give me a first round pick next year. Carolina. Yeah, all right, Carolina. Give me the first rounder, and then the CPU can deal with you know, round four and beyond, the day three picks. I want to trade for that safety. If I missed out on two generational or near generational players in the same draft, that would be nuts. I've seen two generationals in the same draft one time that I can remember, may have happened more, probably has, but it was the double receiver class. And I have, that's in my, um, I did 10 years of drafts and this is what I got or something like that. I may have changed the title. But um, that video, I had two generational, like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, receivers in the same class. Kai Gaddis is a 77. So not generational, but still good. 80 finesse moves, 75 power moves, 82 speed, 85 acceleration. It's, it's the athletic stuff that's holding him back, unfortunately. He's just a fine athlete. And... A very good technician, but not, not like a crazy amazing player. And the top rated player in the class is an 81 overall free safety. Damian Wagner went at pick 10. Man, Randall Barrett went at 24 is also a 77 overall with normal dev though. So that's, that's a big change. That's a huge change, but um, it's going to reset me. Redemption, potentially? <laughs> Don't reset me back to your one draft, please. Okay. This is 2023. Oh my god. Hey, Gerard Knight. What a cool looking player. Wow, he's a beast. Holy cow, what a pick. Gerard Knight, holy cow, wow. Uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. I just can't. I can't. Um, no. Nah, ah, uh, gosh. You know what's funny? Is that the first time, it actually didn't reset me all the way back here. It reset me to after I had already made the Eric Armstead trade. I don't remember what I gave up, by the way. But it definitely was, I think, to the Ravens, including Eric Armstead. 
I don't really remember the trade. I don't know. Wow, Tracy Gore, what a pick. Also, did they just, did they change it back? Is the, is the motion when you draft the player, is it, is it linked to what dev trait they have? Like it used to be years ago before they fixed that? It's always something with this game, dude. Who's the other player I took in this class? I'm, I'm losing steam. Oh yeah, fucking Paul St. Louis. I, no, I, I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, I'm ending the video. Future rebuilds are going to be done offline. I, I just can't. I hope you guys understand. I, I'm sorry for such a shitty end of the video. Um, maybe I'll just use this to highlight how terrible the game is right now. Did I mention Giants franchise is broken? Have I mentioned that? Yeah, clearly. Oh, and now it's jumped all the way to the end of the draft. So maybe that'll happen in 49ers franchise. Maybe I'll revisit this tomorrow if anything's changed. I apologize, but damn, guys, this is it's just so frustrating, so disheartening. Hope you can understand. If this is the outro, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Hit that subscribe button for more fun. Thank you. Goodbye.